Let us now talk about processes. We have seen that operations management involves taking inputs and producing outputs using transformation processes. And operations management is really about managing these transformation processes well so that we can produce more outputs using fewer inputs. That means we can get better productivity. Every organization exists to produce outputs of some sort, and there's going to be a substantial part of the organization which is engaged in the operations function. So if you want to identify the functional departments that are involved in operations, simply look for all those activities that are sort of rubber meets the road kind of activities that take the inputs of the organization and transform them into outputs. You can find these activities being carried out across a wide range of department labels. If I look in a manufacturing setting, I can identify a large chunk of this primary productive process as happening within a building called a factory. If I look inside this factory, I see this guy over here. He calls himself an operator because he operates some sort of a machinery. And I see this woman over here. She also calls herself an operator because she operates some sort of machinery. And I see this guy over here. He calls himself the operations manager because he's in charge of all these operations. But let's say I go to a bank. I look at this guy over here and I ask him, do you operate a step in the process that serves the customer? He said, yes, of course I do but he does not call himself an operator. He calls himself a teller. Then I look at this lady, and she calls herself a loan officer. Again, I ask her, do you operate a step in the process that serves the customer's need? And she says, yes, I do. Yet, she does not call herself operator. And then I meet this lady at the corner office. She calls herself a bank manager. Notice that you find different labels and different terminology depending on the setting. But no matter what the setting, those activities that are engaged in producing the primary output of the organization are in fact engaged in the primary productive process. You can think about those activities and put a label around them, call them the operations activities. And keep in mind that all of these activities may or may not be combined into one functional department called the operations department. Now what about those activities that are not directly involved with producing outputs that are of value to the external customer? Are those people not engaged in operations? If we put a label on certain activities and say that these activities represent the primary productive process that serves the external customer, then the rest of the activities are non-operations activities, of course. But let's look at some of these non-operations activities. Let's consider this guy, for example. Well, clearly, he's not an operations guy. He's an accountant. And how about this lady here? Well, she's just too cool to be an operations type. But wait a minute. Let's say she is the manager of the accounting department. Her boss has given her a budget, a number of people working under her. At the end of the quarter, her boss is going to hold her responsible for the output that her department is going to produce. So she has to really manage the inputs, transformation processes, and outputs of her department. Is that not managing an operation? Now, even though when you look at the entire organization, this department is a non-operations function, but when you zoom into that department level, you can see that here are operations happening within this department as well. And the operations manager is clearly the manager of that department. Likewise, if you zoom in further to a smaller and smaller unit within the organization, at every level you will notice that some outputs are being produced, some inputs are being taken in, and somebody is responsible for those transformation processes. Now, whether you put the label of operations functional department on that process or not, you can see that still there are operations being carried out over here. And if you do not manage those transformation processes well, the outputs are not going to come out as well as they could. So really speaking, at every point within any organization, you expect to see processes that are producing outputs. And all of these are in fact operations, even though for convenience purposes, we tend to identify a certain set of activities as belonging within an operations department. Nevertheless, every activity that is going on in the organization can in fact be deemed as operations. Rather than look at a departmental view of an organization, let's look instead at a process view of the organization. Any organization we can see has four core processes. Perhaps the most important process is the order fulfillment process. This is where the work gets done that produces the output that the customer really wants. In that sense, we are fulfilling the order of the end customer. Now, if you think about where in the organization these kinds of activities take place, you might find them under various labels. 
typically you will find these under the label of operations now if you're fulfilling an order for a customer who is at our door how did that customer get to our door that's where the customer relationship process comes in and this process involves all those activities that generate a customer bring that customer to our door and make a sale in our typical departmental structure the marketing activity would be very much related to customer relationship another very core activity is the supplier relationship process now if we have an order to fulfill and a customer to deliver the order to we also need suppliers on the other end who are going to provide us our inputs and nowadays a larger and larger chunk of the output that we are supplying to our customers tends to come from our suppliers we take something from our suppliers and we add a little value and we pass it on to our customers so the supplier relationship process is another very important process and of course any organization also continually develops new products and new services of course in certain industries such as the electronics industry you can see how important the new product development process is going to be but even in slow moving industries where new products or new services are not developed at a rapid pace there is always going to be a change from day to day simply because the customer is no longer satisfied with what you provided them yesterday and the competition is going to keep providing something new and you have to keep up with that or you will drop out of the race besides these core processes we also have a lot of support processes in any organization and these support processes basically support the core processes and as we said before no matter what process you're talking about even if it is a very small insignificant process you can still see that inputs are being transformed into outputs and you can see that there is an operation going on that needs to be managed.